Well, hello, Prey and Share Warriors. Oh. <laughs> Thought my other camera was stuck. Alright, that's making noise. I am still working on maneuvering two cameras. <laughs> Someday I will be an expert at this. Until then, I hope you had an awesome day and um, I am so happy to be here. My name is Charm and this is my ministry, Awesome Treasures Ministry. I want to show you my t-shirt today, which is such a true statement. Coffee gets me started. I am a coffee drinker. Jesus keeps me going. So true. Such a true statement about me. If you wanted to know something about me, know that I like coffee. <laughs> I am a coffee drinker. So last night before I came on, I was having a, um, a special little coffee that I made in the blender. And I want to have some special coffees in the afternoons, but I've got to get me some more decaf coffee because I like to sleep too. Alright, well I am really, I had trouble with my camera. I don't want to like bend this down so much that you can see my other camera, but I don't want to be a floating head either on either camera. So okay, I think I can live with that. Tonight we are going to do, I covered it up, Psalm 72 and 73. So we are back to diving into Psalms and, um, oh great. This camera is lagging. <sighs> I need a I need a technical person to work out all my issues. Like maybe tomorrow. I don't have any place to go tomorrow. So maybe I'll sit down and figure out, okay, what settings am I supposed to have my camera on? Because I am not very good at this. Facebook is great except for the fact that I'm having a hard time positioning my phone to where you can't see this camera on top of my computer but Facebook the the camera on my phone is awesome the camera on this computer is not awesome and I thought I was getting a good camera but I got a really bad camera so then I thought, well, I'm going to upgrade my software. So I did that. I paid for that. And it wasn't much better. So then I thought, well, I'm going to buy me a new camera. And I like this camera, but it lags just like my software did. So I don't know. All right. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter because my cameras and... What y'all see is not important to God. What's important to God is whether I'm obedient to share His Word and whether I'm obedient to share a gospel message. And anyone that wants to come here and watch is free to come and watch. Alright. So if they don't mind the unprofessionalism and just want to listen to the Word, then... We're good. God, we just praise you, God, because we do, as people, we worry about the stupidest things, and I'm sure you're sitting there on your throne going, wow, that just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. That's, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to get out my truths and to get out the gospel of Jesus. So, God, please forgive me for being um, worried about things that are not important to you. And thank you for all that you do. You are on your throne and you are in control, God. There is nothing that you don't see, that you don't hear, that you don't know. There is nothing hidden from you. 
And God, you are the great Jehovah. You are the great I am. You are always, and you are everlasting. Thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our protector, our provider. Thank you for being our shelter in the storm. Thank you for being our strength and our refuge. God, you are mighty and powerful and magnificent and miraculous. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all in righteousness according to your truth. But you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate, forgiving, faithful, trustworthy, patient. You want none to perish. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us as your children. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we pray for the lost. We just pray, God, that you would open their eyes and their ears and their hearts to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus. We just pray that um, the prodigals would remember the relationship that they had with you, and they would return, and they would repent, and they would be reconciled. God, all the many disasters that are going on, I was flipping through YouTube today, and I saw that we had an earthquake here in Texas. That is an earthquake in diverse places. And so, God, we just pray for all these things that are happening, God, that you would be with all of these people affected, God. I saw that earlier today that a 14-year-old went to a convenience store in Garland, Texas, and shot some more teenagers and uh, injured someone, just an innocent person that was working at that convenience store in the kitchen. God, that is so much evil. And there are, those stories are a dime a dozen because they're happening everywhere. God, I just pray, I pray, God, that you would be with these families that had lo have lost loved ones and that you would be with these families that uh, people have sustained injuries because there's just been so many things going on lately, God. But I know, God, that you are reaching out to people through these tragedies, God. I pray that they will turn to you and that they would feel your presence, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength, God, that you would give them healing if they need healing, that you would be with their families and give them strength. We pray for all the families that have lost loved ones beside, besides these things that go on. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them, God. And we pray that they would feel your presence in their time of loss. I started watching a lady, God, that has lost many, many family members so quickly. And she is on her own journey, God. I just pray that you would be with her and you would protect her. And that you would give her a peace, that you would heal her, God. And through this healing, that you would draw her to you. God, we just pray for the sick. There are so many that are sick right now. We just pray for healing for them. And that you would give their, their uh, family strength, God. We pray for all the missing children. We just pray that they would be found. We pray for their parents. We pray for the missing adults, too, God, that they would be found. We just pray, God, for a peace that passes all understanding. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I didn't know I was going to be praying about all this. Let me share with you um, a lady that I have been... <laughs> I do not watch Netflix, I do not watch HBO, I do not watch movies, I do not watch anything, but I watch YouTube. And I go on binges watching different people, and I've been watching people that have converted their vans into their living areas, and they're traveling and everything, so I have been watching that. And... Um, I'm sorry, I don't know which camera to look at. This is very annoying. Um, I'm just going to look straight at this light. I'm going to try to focus on this camera. Okay, so anyway, I've been watching. I watch so many. I watch this guy that does tours of people that have converted their vans. And it's interesting 
and I have a creative, inventive mind, so it's interesting to me how they get everything to fit in a very small area. Not that, believe me, I do not want to do that. I'm, I'm quite content where I am. But they intrigue me, and um, so I like to watch it. And I've been watching this lady that has been doing organizing and decluttering, and so I'll watch that. And then I have this lady, she's Swedish, or I don't know, she's Swiss or something, I don't know, she has some kind of accent. And she does cleaning, so I follow her too. I try to follow Christians because I line up best with their values. But sometimes I do find myself following other people. But if they start cussing, I'm gone. I do not stay there for cussing. I don't like cussing. I don't like cussing in shows. I don't like it in movies. I don't, you know, I'm not going to listen to it. So, um, it's not just me. It's the Holy Spirit in me does not want to listen to it. And, um, anyway, so I've been watching this lady today that is out doing a solo van uh, just touring the country in her van and living in her van and trying to figure things out as she goes along it's uh, very interesting alright well enough about that enough about me and some things that I do um, I read the Bible I enjoy reading the Bible I enjoy reading God's Word. This is my instruction booklet. And I will never know everything in it. But I'm going to try to learn as much as I can before I go to meet Jesus in the air or before Jesus comes to get me. I don't know which it's going to be. Okay, I know we read through 71. Uh -oh. These pages are so thin. And so I was reading, I want to go back to something that we read. Because I have my study Bible now. Because I finally figured out what the little things in the center meant on my other Bible, which is the Bible that I use for my uh, quiet time but I was right about what I thought about they were talking about where did it go I'm sorry Where was that? Hmm, I thought it was 28. But that's not it. Hmm, maybe it was in 71. But I don't think it was. Well, that's definitely strange. was talking about that they offered Jesus like vinegar to drink all right well I can't find it in this Bible so let's just move on I'll try to do some more research on it, but I did figure it out. Okay. Well, that is weird. I am in Psalm. Psalm 71. Okay. 
Well, let's do Psalm 72 and 73 like I advertised. Okay, glory and universality, universality of the Messiah's reign. And this is a Psalm of Solomon. Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy and will break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear you as long as the sun and moon endure. Throughout all generations he shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. In his days the righteous shall flourish in abundance of peace until the moon is no more. He shall have dominion also from the sea, from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him, and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles will bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he will deliver the needy when he cries, the poor also, and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and needy, he w and will save the souls of the needy. He will reform their life from oppression and violence, and, pre and precious shall be their blood in his sight. And he shall live, and the gold of Sheba will be given to him. Prayer also will be made for him continually, and daily he shall be praised. There will be an abundance of grain in the earth on the top of the mountains. Its fruit shall wave like Lebanon. And those of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall continue as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only does wondrous things. And blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. Oh, well, I guess that was the end of um, David's prayers and... Like, I didn't know until I started reading Psalms out of this Bible, but there are, like, books in here. So, like, book one is Psalms 1 through 41, and then book two is, I guess, 42 through 72. And so we're starting book three with Psalm 73, but I want to see if there's any study part to this 72. Okay, here's the study part to 72. The superscription links this psalm with Solomon, who requested understanding or wisdom with which to judge God's people. Nature itself, the mountains and hills, will participate in the delight of a righteous ruler. In 72, 18, and 19, a doxology marks the end of the book two of the Psalms. The words emphasize that God is to be blessed forever and throughout the whole earth. Glory refers to God's character, presence, and influence. All right, that was the end of 72. So let's read 73, and we will read the commentary study part of it, and then we'll do a salvation message. Okay? Oops. I kicked my ring camera. I mean, my ring light. It's a light. It's a light. It's a light. <sighs> my. Too much technology. I started with two phones, <laughs> or a phone and a computer. Okay, the tragedy of the wicked and the blessedness of trust in God. And this is a psalm of Asaph. 
Truly God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here, and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, How does God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, who are always at ease. They increase in riches. Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me, until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Surely you set them in slippery places, you cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors, as a dream when one awakes. So, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was vexed in my mind. I was so foolish in it, <laughs> sorry, I was so foolish and ignorant. I was like a beast before you. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold me by my right hand. You will guide me with your counsel. And afterward, receive me to glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. For you have destroyed all those who, who desert you for a harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all your works. So we want to put our trust in God, and we want to be blessed by God. We do not want the wrath that is going to pour out on the wicked. We need to choose. In my quiet time this morning, you know, God was sharing with me that it is time to choose. We are at the time of shaking. We see so many things going on because God is trying to get mankind's attention. He is trying to draw them back to Him through Jesus, through salvation. And so this is what we are seeing because we are close to the end. And so this is what the study part says. The psalmist expressed his human weakness. His feet had nearly slipped. He saw the prosperity of the ungodly and was envious of the wicked who never seemed to suffer from, for their wrongdoing. Life did not seem fair. The psalmist began to reflect the viewpoint of faith as he entered the sanctuary and worshiped God. He began to put his life, put life in perspective. He realized the devastating end of the wicked, which led him to pour out his heart in praise to God. The poet did not receive a comprehensive answer to the unanswerable question of evil. He did receive great assurance of the presence of God. So there is a day of reckoning coming for evil. But they have the same opportunity right now to call upon the name of the Lord and to be saved. And I know many, many Christians think, and maybe I thought this too for a while, well, they're past. They're past that point where they can get back to Jesus. Well, really, God only knows that because God is the only one that knows the hearts and minds, and He, he knows where that point is. 
and we don't. We don't know. And so that's why we need to share with everyone because we don't know. We don't know who will accept and who will not accept and we don't know who really is saved and who isn't saved, but God does. God knows all of his children. He knows every hair on our head. He knows everything that we do. There is nothing hidden from God. If you think you have a secret sin that is hidden from God, it is not. There is nothing hidden from God. So if you are, if you do find yourself and you have strayed away, then um, ask God for forgiveness and try to get back where you belong. Um, it's never too late to either be saved or to come back to Jesus. As long as you're breathing, as long as Jesus has not returned, it is never too late. And God wants all, God wants all to come. Jesus died for all. Jesus came for all. Jesus was born for all. Jesus died for all. And God wants Jesus to come back for all. But we have a free choice. We have a choice to make. All of us have a choice to make. Well, I keep hitting my... I keep hitting the stand of my ring light. Oh, that's what it is. It's a ring light. Okay, we're going to do this tonight. We're going to do the E3 band. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 Oh, I gotta get the I gotta get the E band. Okay, so the gold color the gold color the gold color represents God the creator of all. He created everyone. He created everyone. That is not very clear. It's supposed to be a really clear camera, but that is not very clear. The Bible says that God is light, and in Him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you, and He wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's Son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. I have to prop up my arm, I guess. I don't know. The dark color represents sin. I guess I might have to hold my arm up. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the, the penalty for our sin is death or separation from God forever. So then we have, oh, back, 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 sorry, I got too far ahead. The first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? Well, then we have the red color, which represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death, so Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So then we have the white with the red. This is just not very clear. I guess that's better. Maybe that's better. Okay. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. 
How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. So this question Mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? And if you would like to do that, then, oh, this is so hard. Then, sorry. Then please repeat this prayer after me. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so the next color is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. Now these are areas of growth. We have the heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. So then we have read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And we have the little praying. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with him. And then we have the water droplet, which represents baptism. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then this part is hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as possible. Sorry, my arm is getting tired. So if you invited Jesus into your life to be your Savior, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus Christ, His Son. So again, you know, just like the bracelet said, read God's Word every day and pray and praise. Be thankful. Trust God in all things. And just grow, grow in your Christianity journey. Okay, well, I am going to do God's blessing. And I am going to pray. And I am going to get off of here. So in Numbers 6, 24 through 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace is such a great thing. So let me pray and... Uh, if you have any comments, leave them in the comments. If you have any prayer requests, leave them in the prayer requests. If you have, if you got saved, leave your name so I can pray for you. And um, I did not do a music share today.
but maybe tomorrow. I thought about it. I just never did get it done. God, we just come to you and we thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We just pray that you would help us to go boldly and to share your truths in the gospel of Jesus. That many would get saved. That there would be a Jesus movement that cannot be stopped in our country. That would extend into the rest of the world. God, that many would be saved. Many prodigals would come home. We just pray that you would, um, I just pray that you would bless whoever comes here, God, that you would protect them, that you would provide for them, that you would guide them, God, and that you would just help them to draw closer and closer to you every day. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow which is wednesday i don't have youth tomorrow so i'll probably be right here um next wednesday we will be back at youth but we took two weeks off so much love and cyber hugs till i see you again good night